It's been a couple weeks since I finished up trimming out most of my shooting lanes and hanging on my stands. Today I got to take half of an Osage orange tree off. Basically it covers one whole shooting lane and I, well, I saw this sucker. You can see it all here behind me. This is basically all got to go. The whole side of it. <laughs> Well, I got done uh, cleaning out this uh, shooting lane here. I kind of left a little bit of a gap right through here for the deer to walk through, but uh, other than that, man, I knocked it all down so I have a clear shot from that stand right into here. There's a crossing through here. Last thing I have to do is right back here, I'm gonna cut the fence down because it's definitely impeding the, the movement through here and I want everything to travel down this lane because I got a perfect shot for it. So I'm gonna go grab a pair of wire cutters, cut off this this fence right here. It's on my property so I can do what I want with it. And um, hopefully this will create one heck of a funnel right through here. Pretty much done with my preseason stand setups. And uh, now all I can do is uh, put my faith in my bow and arrow, do my practicing, get ready for the season. Word, we'll see on stand. Bow hunting is my life. Filming is my passion. My bow is my weapon. Hunting giant deer is my purpose. Shed hunting is what moves me. Chasing spring gobblers sharpens our skills. Designing the gear that I use is my job. Making better bow hunting videos is my duty. These are my friends and my brothers. This is my world. This is Whitetails Inc. Going into the second season on my property, I had done a lot more planning and had gotten some beautiful food plots planned with the help of some good friends. Tim Meyer, Clinton Fawcett, and Nick Whitaker have helped me out a ton this year, and what can I say, the results speak for themselves. I can't say thank you enough to these guys. With a couple of new blind ambition bail blinds and the help of these guys, I've created some pretty cool kill plots and have the food to hold the does, which this time of year is everything. So I want to set the blind early to be able to hunt this beautiful green plot here behind us and then I want to have it in an area where I might just have to rotate it a certain number of degrees just to get um, a shot onto some corn that I'll knock down my truck as we get closer to season because they'll want to feed in the areas of, I've learned it and the other thing is I have to knock down the corn in an area where the bucks have to literally get into this field in order to see that area for does because there's a high area up here that's thicker than crap that runs along this edge. And if I was a big buck and I was a nice exposed area of feeding right along that ridge, I'd just come right up along that, look down. If there wasn't any deer, then I know that I have no reason to go investigate. Well, I want to manipulate these bucks and make them come into this field in order to see if there's any bucks, or excuse me, if there's any does or other deer feeding in those knock down areas. And I'm going to have a 30 yard crack at them. And that's the way, just got to set it up. Well, here we are. I'm out uh, celebrating the launch of the Whitetails Inc. website by doing some scouting and trying to locate some scrapes to move some trail cameras onto. Looking for those community type spots where deer come in and it's like a social networking site <laughs> out in the field basically. And it's where they congregate, uh, they leave sign, they come and check different sign and it's part of the circuit that they take from bedding area to bedding area, feeding area to feeding area and it basically connects all of them together. And I've been monitoring these on all my trail cameras throughout the summer 
and I definitely notice a pattern that they they generally will rotate back through an area every four to five days, give or take. Sometimes longer, sometimes shorter, but they're on a they're on a path where they go from area to area, and so I'm, it's just about putting those pieces together and killing them in between someplace. Ooh, baby, baby. Big old scrape. This is one I remember from last year, and I came out here for specifically to see if I might be able to find it. And uh, sure as heck, man, it's the big community scrape. This is a, the one I, I've been dying to have, have a trail camera over for a long time, so I'm going to get set up here real quick. If that doesn't put things in perspective, there are billions and billions of acorns this year. And uh, it's definitely going to keep these deer in the timber a little bit more during the early part of the season. Um, I'm not gonna get too aggressive early on. <sighs> These big bucks just don't move that much. And most of the, the big target bucks that I'm after don't live on these properties. They live on adjacent properties and things like that. So I'm uh, out with an exception. They live everywhere, but <sighs> you know, it's hard to pin them down exactly. But that's why I'm out here putting trail cameras out just so that I can hopefully get a lead on a buck. I'm in a very, very sensitive area trying to find spots I can set up and get into kind of easier to check throughout the season. But uh, it's always a balancing act being in sensitive areas where the big deer are and knowing that they're there. I love this feeling, the feeling of getting new ground, seeing scrapes and rubs in the timber. It's the ultimate time of year. It's opening day, baby, October 1st. Another big scrape, look at this. I can legally hunt and I just got access to a brand new piece. It's a stupid spot. I've been driving by for the last several years and I just said, you know, I'm gonna go talk to that farmer out there. They were getting ready to pick some beans and uh, happened to talk to the right guy. So, God bless America. How can you not find that beautiful, you know? We're so lucky. I'm such a, such a, such a lucky guy to be able to go out and do this all the time. It's kind of hard to put a price on it, and that's why I'm not, uh, the hunt comes first, man. The hunt comes first. No matter how bad the business day is, this is what makes my job the best job in the world. I have to do another job in order to do this job, kind of part-time slash yeah I just work a lot more <laughs> but oh man beautiful territory I'm looking for my second spot to put a trail cam on. that's a pretty bird pretty bird I've said it before and I'll probably reiterate this point over and over again my use of trail cameras in the last year has completely changed how I hunt it takes a lot of pressure off me and my hunting areas by showing me what is around 24 hours a day. There is simply no better tool for locating big bucks. My personal philosophy is to work smart and hard. It's opening day, baby. I'm in Iowa self-filming. First time I've ever been alone in probably something along the lines of five years, give or take, and I'm anticipating a couple of does maybe to come out in this field. That's kind of my goal is just to kill a doe tonight. So I'm like, you know what? Instead of skipping tonight, Timmy and Dallas are on a buck. And so I let them go chase it. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to come out and sit on this bean field. Now I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to get my release on here and see how I'm going to exactly try to film myself doing all this fun stuff. I want to make sure I got plenty of clearance with my bow and stuff here. So pretty much anything right here, anything right here, I, can, I probably can get on film. Opening day, man, it's a religious, a religious, religious day for many guys. There's, I wonder how many hundreds of thousands, if not millions of guys are out sitting in stands right now thinking the same thing, man. Oh, I've been waiting a long time for today. Well, brothers, it's here, it's here.
Obviously, I didn't get a shot at that dough, but my God, it's just exciting, that feeling. She stayed out at like 38, 40 yards. I just put this crop line in two days ago. She was a little bit nervous, totally expected. But it was uh, unbelievable. Look, no. look how precious this beard is. Forward. It's so precious. Come November 1. Fidel Castro <laughs> is jealous of my look. You're right. You <laughs> look like a little baby. No. Yeah, next to me. This is going to be <laughs> unbelievable. You may remember Nick Whitaker as the guy who cried like a little girl in our past video, The Grind. Well, Nick's back where he belongs, and we're hoping for tears in 2010. Yeah. Hey, you need to pull it together. <laughs> Unlike Todd in his 15 days of hell, I had my one day of... I kind of broke sweat hanging. Two, I, I have... Two stands that are cut out completely, ready for this deer season. I hunted one of them tonight. I'll never hunt it again. <laughs> and I... So 50% 50, 50 of your hunting strategy is already kaputs. Well, you know you know me. I'm, I'm the running gun type. D Dallas, you are like the wind. You like to go with it. Yep. And, and another thing I learned in the off season, that I am allergic to real rubber latex. Impossible. All I know is if you guys do kill something and you don't have to worry about butch or anything, all you gotta do is gut it, skin it, and I'll take it to this guy over Mount Union. Ten bucks. The best jerky you'll ever eat. You told me that for, for a year. ten bucks. Oh my god. You like a ten bucks in a bag of charcoal or something? It's un <laughs> Now does that sound like a place that you would get good jerky from, Johnson? Well, I've paid ten dollars for a lot of things and I didn't get any jerky out of the deal. Reminds me of a little story that my uncle told me about Vietnam where this young kid, fresh off, you know, fresh out of basic training, went over to Vietnam. And uh, he joined a he joined a platoon of roughnecks, I guess you'd say. You kinda look like a roughneck right now, Dallas Forward. And they ended up going into the, the thick stuff, going into the bush, hunting down Charlie. Well, in this platoon there was, there was divided because there was a lieutenant and a sergeant, they didn't get along too well. There was an attack and the platoon got split up, right? And so uh, they went looking for each other and the one sergeant, he's like, I'll go find him. And then Charlie was in the distance and he's popping through the woods. And all of a sudden, the guy they were looking for, same sides, pops up, boom, shoots his own man because he didn't like him at all. Well, then... Dude, isn't that platoon? <laughs> <laughs> the whole time I was saying, that's really... <laughs> I've been watching a trail cam right in this bottom, and there's a point right beyond that tall tree where everything pinches together, and they all go through this five yard area. So my goal is to get a ground blind brushed in down there. I had a trail camera set up on this tree right here for the last two weeks for a big reason. I've always thought this was a really good spot. I'm up on top of kind of a dam and it kind of goes down below me right here. This is where I had anything that came through here I got a picture of and in a matter of about, I think it was about 10 days, I had close to 400 pictures. There are does and bucks coming through here every single day. I actually have an entire buck fight of two bucks fighting down here for like 15 minutes. Pretty insane, but it was enough motivation for me to know I needed to get a ground blind in here. This is wicked killer. We can put the ground blind right in here. It's not, it's by no means flat. It's gonna be angled down, but that's where our shots are. It's down below here. And I don't think they'll see the blind up here, which is a big factor. So the first couple times we hunt, oh gosh, yes, we can. I like it. This is a killer setup. I've got a lot of work to do. I gotta trim out a lot of branches, so I'm just gonna get started. This blind is broke, it's got two broken poles in it, so I'm gonna have to tie it out. But for this setup, it actually kind of works good because the blind we can kind of tie down around it, I think. Just trying to think of where my shots would be, where I'm gonna be, where's my cameraman gonna be, and uh, 
what makes the most sense, you know? But now I'm gonna work cut out for me. I gotta trim some uh, trim some shooting lanes. I'm gonna keep all the brush that I trim out to brush in the front of this blind. There's always a dead spot between cameraman and hunter. Usually it's between you because you just can't match the angles up. So I'm choosing that to be this front part right here. So it's gonna give me something to stack brush up against. And I'm gonna lay in a huge brush pile on both sides so that when they look up here, they see a bunch of brush and two dark holes. Well, if you look up on all these pines, it's thick pines for a half mile, just like this, which is why we're setting up here. because It's just nothing but a big bear bedding area and travel corridor, and these deer have never, ever been hunted here before. So. One of these can cost you a buck. Don't let it. I'm going all the way because these freaking deer, these bucks will stay in this cover. This nice opening right here, I want to anticipate getting a shot right here. I'm going to pretty much plan on having to get in here another five so yards, so I'm going to trim it and allow myself to do that. I'll admit, ground blinds aren't my first choice for bow hunting. I hate the limited visibility and have always had a hard time really believing you could kill a big buck from one. In the last year, my opinions have changed. In some cases, it's either hunt from the ground or don't hunt at all. In this case, I've got to hunt the spot. And the scent control advantage ground blinds offer make them a great choice for sets when you just don't have any other options. There's rubs on all these streets. This is going to be a killer, killer setup. got this blind pretty much set and trimmed and I made an access pit trail right up through here through the cedar so we can sneak right down in here and get in here if there's deer down here they won't even see us or hear us got lots and lots of pine browse and I'm gonna try to do my best to make this ground blind look like a cedar tree I got tons and tons of brush laying around to, to use so I realize hunting season is far underway and we haven't even really shown any hunting footage yet you know when I started white knuckle productions this is what I had envisioned but the DVD format didn't quite allow for Kyle and I to share all this information. In my world, planning, preparation, and hard labor is just as important as the time I spend on stand each year. My goals are to plant seeds in each and every one of you that can hopefully make you try some new things and hopefully become a better hunter. If nothing else, then to show you the tools that I use to get the job done. I would like to personally thank Kyle Reindeers, Nick Whitaker, Tim Meyer, Clint Fawcett, Dallas Fort Worth, and Timmy Thacker for their help with a lot of the different aspects of what I do. Also, I don't own a tractor, so if there's a company looking to lend out some equipment for exposure, give me a call. Well, as you can see behind me, I got one uh, brushed in ground blind. I know I wanted a spot here. Last year, me and Mikey Corbin set it up right over there about 30 yards, and we only saw a couple deer, and every deer wanted to be right through here. Now with this blind here, They'll put a safety buffer of 15, 20 yards probably, but they're gonna, right down here below me, it's the easiest path between the top of the hill, this fence line, and a bunch of timber up here, a bunch of food here, food over there, and then bedding and lots and lots of cover that way. So this is just a natural spot where they wanna come through. I had been getting pictures of does almost every morning coming right through here. I even got the sippy cup bug right there. Seeing a big mature buck come through this area, even though it was in the middle of the night, I'm pretty, pretty confident that during the rut, throughout the year, they're going to use, utilize this because of the cover. There's so much good cover. It's all thick, nasty pines through this whole area. Thanks a lot for watching Whitetails Inc. Next week, we're killing deer. If you're sick of watching the same old, same old, check out a White Knuckle DVD. Not just different, better. To check out our full line of White Knuckle Productions DVDs, gear, and additional video clips, Either click on the link from whitetailsinc.com or visit us at whitenuckleproductions.com.